Hey, this is Benedict, and this is a deepish dive into the sound design and wires implementation I did for the Unity Tanks tutorial project. After going through the tutorial and building the game myself, I thought it would be good to redesign some of the sounds and just flesh it out a bit, and then to implement the sound with wires rather than in the Unity engine. So first of all, let's play the game and see what we got. We got some redesigned one-shot sounds like charging and firing. The engine sound changes as well depending on whether you're moving forwards or reversing or idle. The ambience changes as the camera zooms out. And the same thing happens with the music as well. And then for shells that land off screen, there's panning to the left and right. Center. And on the left. Cool. First up, I redesigned a lot of the sounds, creating a few different variations of each one so they can be triggered randomly. In Wise, these sound effects are then sent through different buses. Off-tank ducking is for sounds which can duck the music, and also for sounds which can potentially be off-screen, so not on the tank's position. Then we have on-tank ducking and no ducking. This is for sounds which always occur on-screen, but don't want to duck the music, for example the engine sound. Next I wanted the tank's movement to drive the engine sound's pitch and speed. Rather than use the tank's actual speed to drive an RTPC, which would then affect the engine audio, I just use the existing variable movement input value, which is either 0 when you're idle, 1 when moving forward, or minus 1 when reversing. This variable drives the tank speed RTPC. This RTPC curve and slew rate are used to simulate the acceleration and deceleration of the tank. The controls in the game are not analog, it's either press a key to go forward or to go back, so this RTPC and slew rate combo suits us just fine. When the tank first spawns, I also run an event to make it sound like the engine is starting from nothing. I start by pitching it down quite a lot, then I play the sound, and then I instantly reset the pitch to where it should be. If we play the start engine event, it will sound like the engine is starting from nothing. Then we can adjust the tank speed. I then wanted the ambience to change, as the camera zooms in and out from the action. If we run the game, we'll see what actually happens to the camera. The camera doesn't actually move in and out. Instead, the orthographic size of the camera changes to give the impression that it's zooming in and zooming out, getting closer to and further from the players. Because of this, I thought that using the camera position relative to the tank wouldn't be very helpful for us when determining what ambience to use. Instead, I used the orthographic size of the camera to drive an RTPC called Camera Zoom. This RTPC is going to be used to drive quite a few things, for example bus attenuations, sensor delays and reverbs, and the ambience blend. To begin with, in Wise, we have a bass ambience for when you're close and when you're far. When close, we get the hum of buildings and machinery, and then as we zoom out, we get more wind noise. As the camera zoomed out, I wanted the ambience to be a bit more detailed though. There's less likely to be much combat when you're this far zoomed out, so let's make it a bit more interesting. To do this, I used some random containers to trigger bird sounds and plane flybyers. These ambient SFX are then sent to an ambient delay bus. There's another delay bus for music, with a delay time specifically set to suit the music. And then the overall music bus has a high and low roll off applied to it inside this parametric EQ, which is driven by the camera zoom. On top of this, the music bus can be ducked by an RTPC called SFX Volume. This is driven by both of the SFX ducking buses. Finally, if the shells fly off screen, I wanted to be able to pan the explosions to the left and right. Again, I didn't think the camera position would be very helpful here. I took a similar approach here to what you often find in mixing for film. If something's on screen, it's not really going to be panned too far left or right. Looking back at it, I don't think this is a very good way to deal with it. It's pretty fiddly and not very efficient either, but for now it does the job. If we check this script attached to the shell, we can see that every frame we're logging the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the shell. By dividing these figures with the screen width or the screen height, and then offsetting them by 0.5, we get a handy figure which we can use to set an RTPC value. This figure gives us a relative position of where the shell is to the center of the screen. If this figure is between minus 0.5 and positive 0.5, then it's on screen. If it's outside of that, then it's off screen. Here we can see how panning is applied to the shells, the further above 0.5, or below minus 0.5, the harder the panning. 
On top of that, depending on how far off screen a shell explodes, bus attenuation, filtering, and delay sends are applied. Of course, if a shell explodes off screen in the Y axis, that won't affect the panning. So then, we've got some nice new dynamic sounds added to the game. Especially the ambience, which sounds pretty decent, I think, when you're really zoomed out. But let's finish this once and for all. Got him. <laughs> 